Hello, I'm here with Dr. Andre Pavlov, who's a lecturer in the Centre for Business Performance at Cranfield School of Management. Andrew has been working on an article that looks at the effect of performance measurement and goes some way to help us understanding how that effect is caused. So, Andre, what do we know about the impact of performance measurement on organisational performance? Surprisingly very little. The evidence that does exist out there is conflicting. There are some studies that show that performance measurement has a positive effect on performance and some studies that show that that effect is negative. Some studies show that there is no effect on performance. We do know that performance measurement affects performance in some way, but we don't know exactly how it happens. So we can see that something is happening, but why it's happening is a little bit more difficult to, to understand. Either why or how, yes. So what problem were you looking to address in this piece of writing? This was exactly the problem we focused on. Uh, we decided to look at the direct impact of performance measurement on performance. So we looked at how performance measurement actually affects organizational performance. And what did you find? What sort of things were you looking at in order to discover this? Well, at first we had to take a step back and uh, we actually had to ask the question of what generates organizational performance? How does organizational performance, um, how is it created in organizations? And what we saw is that one of the best ways of looking at it is looking at organizational processes or organizational routines as we call it. And these routines consist of two different parts. Understanding of what, of what the routine is, understanding of what performance is, and then actually doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's two parts, the understanding and the doing it. Mm -hmm. And then we decided to trace the effect of organizational um, performance measurement on these routines. And we found that there are three effects the trigger effect, the guidance effect, and the intensification effect of measurement. Okay. Could you say a little bit more about those three effects, what those, what those three things mean in a little more detail? Sure. The trigger effect is perhaps the most well-known effect. And it's your typical KPI or your typical performance, um, performance measure that gives you the information, the performance feedback mm -hmm. about the past action. Mm -hmm. And that, based on that feedback, you have two options. You can either change the performance mm -hmm. or you can revise the, uh, the target. The guidance effect um, has, a, has an opposite effect. Um, it actually um, focuses the attention of people on the future mm -hmm. because the performance measure acts as a goalpost um, for, for the organization, for the people. Mm -hmm and the performance tends to gravitate mm. towards a particular performance measure. Mm. The so we can see where we've been, but what does it also tell us about where we could be going? That's right, mm. that's right. Without prescribing necessarily the, um, exactly what you need to do, mm. but it tells you where you need to be going. Mm -hmm. And the intensification? The intensification effect is perhaps the most interesting uh, one of them. Uh, what it says is that regardless of uh, the way in which you use performance measures. Just the mere fact of using them actually forces people to go through this iteration between thinking about performance, trying something new, thinking about the effects of actions, trying something new again, and actually changing, discovering the performance drivers and then changing their performance as, as you're going through these iterations. And in doing that, is is that how the routines are then perhaps reconfigured or, or changed in some way? These, this is exactly how routines evolve through these iterations between thinking and acting. Okay, thanks. So this was a theoretical piece and I think it was said by Kurt Levine that there's nothing so practical as a, as a good theory. So Andre, could you tell us how this theory could be used, what, what practical contribution it can make? Sure, two things I would say. Um, First, it allows us um, to have a more nuanced understanding of the effect of performance measurement on performance. So for instance, if you introduce a performance measurement initiative and it doesn't have an immediate visible effect on your performance indicators, our work allows you to ask the question of what else might be going on. So for instance, what might be going on is that the routines, the existing routines are incapable of delivering performance. Mm -hmm. And what happened is actually people revised the target and people revised their understanding of what the routine can actually make. 
Um, the other thing, of course, is, um, is prescriptive. Knowing what we know now allows us um, to pick the right action for the right purpose. So, for instance, if you have a very well-established routine uh, and, and you know what it's producing, then what you need is clear feedback, clear performance indicators, um, and clear controls. If, on the other hand, you are unclear about the performance drivers, what you need to go, what you need to do is you need to go through the cycle of intensification, through the cycle of discovering what those drivers are. Right. Okay, so you don't stop until you're clear about that. Exactly. And, and knowing what we know now allows you to pick the right action for the right purpose. Okay. So where does this take us? What are the next steps in this area, do you think? What we are trying to understand now is uh, what are the conditions that make these routines open to change from outside? Because routines very often are there to preserve stability. And as such, they can actually um, engender rigidity and make organizations closed for change. What we are trying to understand is when that change is actually possible. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.